This is tutorial 1-1, overview of ArcGIS Pro. In the GIS tutorial 1 for ArcGIS Pro, a platform workbook. To begin this tutorial, you're going to want to open up the ArcGIS Pro program. And then you're going to have to sign on with your ArcGIS account username and password. On the left hand side, you're going to look for the Open Another Project. You're going to want to browse to the folder where you've saved your tutorial data. And for this tutorial, we're going to go into Chapter 1, Tutorials, and open up Tutorial 1-1. Now, if you're familiar with ArcMap, normally the extensions are MXD. For ArcGIS Pro, it's AP. RX, and I assume that stands for ARC Project. So you're just going to click on that and click OK, or you could just double click it. When the project opens, you're going to see all the layers show up in the table of contents, just like it would in ARC Map. The only one on, if you scroll down, is population density, persons per square mile. They want us to close the contents panel. So we're just going to click on the X next to it. And you can see that we have a larger view. I'm just going to turn this one off and these as well. The reason they're having us do this is that there are going to be times when you're going to have to maybe open it up because you accidentally closed it or maybe a different user closed it. Up here at the top, it looks less like it does in ArcMap and more like a program like Word or PowerPoint or Excel, where we now have these little groups of functions. So we're going to go to View, and that's going to open up all the groups associated with View. And you're going to find the contents under in the Windows group. And you're just going to click on that, and that opens it. Just like arc map you can also pin it and unpin it to where it opens and closes so you have a larger view I honestly don't understand why they have it where you can close this when they have the auto hide you can also click on the little drop down and choose float and you could do this in arc map 10.0 and above I believe uh, maybe even in arc map 9.3 and you can add it to the right side. Uh, you can add it to the top if you wanted to. Pull it down and add it to the bottom. If you prefer having it floating around, you could do that. I'm going to put it on. But as you can see, when I put it up on the top, it expanded it. If you go near right where it meets the map, you get the little two arrows. So you just click and drag to where it's the size that you find most useful. Now we're going to come up here and we're going to go to our map tab. And this will have all our groups associated with just the map. And we're going to look under the navigate and we're going to click on the full extent, which is the little globe. And that'll bring our display up to the full extent of our layers. If we go to the project tab, this is just like in kind of any Word program or Microsoft program. You can go in and open, save, save as. So we're going to click on save as. And in the chapter one tutorials folder, we're going to name this tutorial 1-1. And you're just going to include your name. I'm just going to put my initials and then click save. Oftentimes you're going to want to create a copy of a project for multiple reasons. You might want to just send it to someone and change the name of it, or you might want to create a backup in case you make any mistakes. So what you can do is you can go up to this little drop down next to our quick access and go down to more commands. See, right now we only have new, open, save, undo, and redo. So if we go to all commands, 
we can type in save as. And that will bring us pretty much where we need to be. But as you can see, there are many different options. So you're going to want to hover over until you find save as, save a copy of the ArcGIS project file to a new location or with a new name. So I'm just going to click on that. And this should become available. So I'm just going to click add and now it's been added. And because it's a save, let's move it up to where it's right next to save as. And then we can just click OK. And now I don't have to go to project and save as. I can just simply click on this and it will allow me to save a project. Still under being under the maps tab, we're going to look for the layer group. Uh, which is right here next to navigation and we're going to add a base map so we're just going to click on this and if you've ever used ArcGIS online this might look very familiar and in here we can come in and add a base map they want us to use the streets base map so we're just going to click on that and as you can see it's been added you could also add base maps from ArcGIS Online uh, in ArcMap, but it was sometimes a little bit more difficult and often slowed down your project. It is a little bit quicker and less of a hassle. Now, we ha have it on here, and as you can see, it's not very helpful because our population density is kind of blocking everything. So we're going to scroll all the way down in our table of contents we're going to right click and choose remove. For the year turn, they want us to experiment with a few more base maps. So we're just gonna go up here and let's try the topo one. Now I'm not sure why I have this white space. I'm not sure if this project has a, a setting that determines what extent, because if I zoom out, I don't see anything. This could be very helpful because most of the time you're just interested in the base map around your area. If you had one that did say the whole world, that would slow down your project. So this might be a feature to help speed that up. And I've been zooming and panning, so I'm gonna use the full extent button to bring me back. And I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna turn this one off. I'm gonna go up here and let's try this light gray canvas. We scroll down, we can remove it just like the others. And let's try imagery with labels. Now you can see that I removed the base map, but we still have all these labels. That's because they were added up here at the top under world boundaries and places. So I have to go up and remove this separately. Next, we're gonna learn how to turn layers on and off. And if you're familiar with any of the other Esri products, this is probably gonna be very easy for you. The one thing I really like about the ArcGIS Pro um, program is that in the table of contents, drawing order is written here. Uh, this is very useful for beginners. A lot of classes that I've taught, people had difficulty just interpreting the symbols that were at the top of the table of contents. By having draw order here, it's much easier for them to know which one they're under. And if you're familiar with uh, ArcMap, you know that there's a list by source, and here it's labeled as data source, uh, selection, editing, uh, snapping. These are new ones, I believe, uh, labeling and charts, which I'm interested in getting to learn myself. So back in the drawing order, you're gonna scroll down until you see the legend for the population density. You can see that it is checked and we can view it. The ones that we cannot view are the ones that are unchecked. So they want us to go in and find the MedExpress clinics, which are up at the top 
and we're going to check the box and that's going to turn them on. And we're going to do this for the FQHC clinics as well as the poverty risk areas. Now the first two that we turned on were points and the last one we turned on is another polygon. And just like in ArcMap, the draw order is very important. If I were to bring poverty risk down under our population density, we would not be able to view it. So I'm just going to bring that back up to where it was and leave it there. Next, we're going to turn on the Allegheny County. So we can see kind of the border and it contains our information. Um, when we have it off, oops, I turned off the wrong one. Uh, we do have an outline, but it's very light. So it's very difficult and it can be kind of distracting. Uh, as you can see, the white space here can be very drawing. By turning on the Allegheny County, it creates a much darker line surrounding our study area but not having to increase the, the, the darkness in the lines within it. So this helps kind of draw our attention to the area of study. We're also going to add rivers and water features. Now this can help people that are familiar with the area kind of determine where things are because they have these landmarks such as the, the three rivers. Another common layer to add to a map to help people identify where they are is streets. You may have noticed that the streets did not come on. That is because we are zoomed out too far. All right. Down here you can see that the check mark is a bit more dull than the ones up here. But if we scroll in, we can see that they appear. If we right click on streets and go to properties, up in the general tab, you will see that this will not appear be if we zoom out beyond 68,188. I'm currently at 63,566. So if I scroll out one, they disappear. And here they appear and our population density disappears using our zoom to full extent. We're going to once again learn how the placement of layers is very important. They want us to click and drag population density all the way up until it's just under MedExpress clinics. Now as you can see a lot of the layers that we had on previously are no longer seen. If we drag it to right where it's above poverty risk areas. We can now see our FQHC clinics. Drag it back down to the poverty index. So we should have the view that we had uh, before. Then we're going to go up to the save button and click that and it'll save our project. And up here you can see the name of the project. So make sure it's the one that is tutorial 1-1 followed by your name or initials. The catalog panel is not open for me so what I have to do is I have to go up to view and choose the catalog panel. Now this catalog is showing us everything involved with this project. So if we expand the one next to maps it's showing us that there is a map care clinics as well as a 3D version. Uh, that is typed scene. So we have map and we have a scene. If we go down and expand the layouts, you can see that there has been a layout created for this. Our database shows us that all our data is being connected to the Chapter 1 Geo database. What folders are connected to this? So we're going to come down here to our layout and we're just going to double click that. And it's opened. Now up here you can see that we have two tabs. One is our map and the other is our layout. 
and as you can see they have a title, a legend, a scale, and our data frame. Since the catalog might not be used as often as the contents, you might want to use the auto hide. So just click on that. If we go up to the layout tab, we have different navigation options. And they, the one that they want us to click is the full extent. Now, if you're using the book, they show you the image of the globe. And that's what we see if we were looking at our map and we go to map and we see the globe but back in our layout you're going to want to click on the full extent which is the page in arrows so we're going to go to the share tab and this will show us all the things we can do with the share and you're going to look for the export group which is just the layout and you're going to navigate to the chapter one tutorials and you're going to change the file name to health clinics as one word and they want us to change it from a PDF to a JPEG They want us to change the resolution from a 96 to a 300. That's points per inch. And then click export. This is the image that's been exported. Now the 300 DPI is a high quality image. So that's something that's really good for say a report or a presentation like on a PowerPoint slide. If you're going to put this on a website or in what they call like maybe a mobile device, they recommend a much lower DPI like of 72. And this is to keep file size as small and faster loading times. So if you're using this for something that's dynamic, you're going to want a smaller DPI just because it's going to slow down your application if it's too large. So I'm going to close my JPEG and I'm also going to click the X next to the layout and that brings me back to my map and I'm going to save. For the your turn they want us to turn on the buffers for the FQHC clinics as well as the MedExpress clinics. You can see that there is a transparency, so you can still see the population density beneath them. Open my catalog panel, double click on it. And as you can see, layers that have been turned on or added to the map are added to the legend as well. So this works very similar to how ArcMap worked with the layout and data views. So I'm just going to X out of this and I'm going to save my map once again. And that concludes tutorial 1-1.